Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. It's late November 2019 and we now have track while scan function of the fire control radar in the F-16C. Now before we go in and show how to manipulate targets and how to shoot targets, which includes multiple AMRAMs in ripples at different targets, we've just got to do some basic theory to understand the differences in targets on our fire control radar screen. There are five different incarnations of what you can see in terms of symbology and understanding the difference between each five is critical to learn how to use TWS. First type is search target, the second is track target, the next is system target, the next is bug target and it hasn't got it here but STT target is technically another one we could have. This is the flight manual of the F-16 page 121. Search target. These are radar contracts that have not been resolved well enough to build a track. These are displayed as a small box in much the same way as in RWS. These targets disappear after a few sweeps if a track cannot be obtained. If a valid track is obtained, usually after being detected on two consecutive sweeps, the contact becomes a track target. In layman's terms, we can't see these search targets very well and we can't interact with them. We can't shoot missiles at them. We don't have enough information about them. If we do obtain enough information automatically while in track world scan mode, they will be converted into track targets which is if you like a default mode if we have enough information about them these targets are displayed as large filled boxes with a velocity vector line showing their direction of travel their altitude is displayed just below each contact up to 10 of these tracks may be present at one time that's an important thing to note you can only track up to 10 of these targets in track while scan mode an important thing to point out at the moment is that we can do things with track targets. We can shoot missiles, we can lock them and whatnot. We can't do anything with a search target. We can't lock it, we can't fire a missile at it. We just know there is a target there. Next is a system target. It will not do this automatically. We will convert a track target into a system target if we decide to. And the whole idea, well, the purpose system targets is to ease designation and tracking of the contacts considered most important. These are displayed at empty boxes and include the velocity vector line and altitude. That there is a system target, hollow box. What it means is that we can turn track targets into system targets. Once they are turned into system targets, we can manipulate them. We can bug them. And that's important because if we want to fire a missile at them and do other things, we need to bug them. A quick thing to say here, if we put our TDC cursor over the top of a system track, then we get information. As you can see there, you guys will know that already. The next I want to show is a bugged target. Once we have our system targets in place, which by the way will only show within the parameters, the azimuth parameters, these two lines of our track while scan, then we can choose one of the system targets to be a bugged target and you can see the symbology there with a circle around it that's the bug target and to fire a missile at a target in track world scan it must be a bug target the only other thing is to say there is a fifth element that is an stt target but we've already been through stt targets in our main fire control radar video we're not going to go over that again but you can do that from tws and just to explain the way we're going to lay this video out is we're going to assume you've already watched our main fire control radar video which contains most of the information all we're looking at today is track while scan specific symbology and manipulation. The first thing to say is that the TWS in this aircraft is extremely easy. Everything that's bespoke to TWS is done on the TMS switch, target management switch. Let's get ourselves set up, let's get our radar. Turn from here, RWS to TWS. The first thing we see on TWS are all of these guys. Ah, right, I'm just gonna pause it there. You see the small guys there are search targets as we discussed earlier, these are automatically being identified as track targets. That will change dynamically as the situation moves on and the WCS gets more information about those targets. If we don't want to press this OSB here to change the track while scan, what we can do is press and hold TMS right for more than 0.8 seconds, then release, and voila, it turns to TWS. Now, we've got a lovely but unrealistic situation here where all of the six targets are going towards me nice and slowly. They're not fighting me, they're not moving about, and they're all at the same altitude just to make this an absolute perfect scenario. In reality, this will be much harder. First thing I'm going to do is change my azimuth of scan from six to three. Three is always my preferred choice for air-to-air -air combat, and I'm going to stick with four bars currently they are track targets what we can do is first if we want to manipulate just one target we can do that we can use our cursor as you already know and you can do tms up this is while in track while scan we've now turned him to a system target we press it again we've now turned him to a bug target we now got information here up on the screen we can launch weapons and stuff like that tms up again 
and you can turn him to an STT target, just like with the range while scan. And we want to back out of those steps, TMS, aft or down, back to bugged, back to system, again, back to track. We're going to let these repopulate as tracks, and then I'm going to show you how we can populate them all together as system targets. So if we have none of these currently as system targets, we're going to move our cursor away. We're going to press TMS right and they're all now going to be sent to system targets. If we want to bug these individually, which we will do if we want to fire missiles, and we want just a certain one, I can now move my cursor again over to that guy there, TMS up, and he's bugged, and I could go and single target track him if I want. If I want to back out of there, TMS aft, and he's now back to system. I can only ever bug one at a time, but if I want to bug cycling through them, i.e. not using my cursor, I can TMS right, and it bugs the nearest one. There is always an assignment fire order, and that usually starts with the guy at the front. TMS right again, it bugs the next guy. Next guy, next guy, next guy, next guy, next guy. If I want to back out of that, TMS aft. And if I want to go all the way back to the beginning, so nothing system, we're just back to basic tracks, TMS aft again. So that shows the basic manipulation of how to turn a track into a system, a system into a bug, a bug into an STT, and how you can back out through those steps and the different ways we've got of doing that. The next thing I want to show you is how to launch six AMRAMs. You've probably already seen this from Wags's video, but I'm going to show you anyway. We're going to select our AMRAMs, ping, back here, TMS right once to split them all to system. I'm going to then TMS again. So the first, uh, this guy now is now bugged. That means we can fire on him. We've got the usual information up on the hard. I'm not going to go through it now. It's in the radar video. He's at 27 miles, and we're going to use our dynamic launch zone here to fire so we're going to speed time up now until he's in range to fire as circle is enlarging I'm going to just pop that in our guide circle there and we can fire and now we're going to tms right to bug the next guy fire 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 they're all kind of um as uh, a different azimuth so uh, that was not the best example perhaps but just showing the basic functionality you can see how we've got six missiles going up to six different targets and that's how we do it in reality you would never really get to fire uh, six uh, missiles at different targets because these would some would be going cold some you just wouldn't get an information enough information for a track i'm going to make sure i support these missiles before they go active by ensuring that i illuminate these guys i forgot to point out is that when we are using this track for scan mode and we are illuminating these hostiles you have these two vertical bars which become the limit of the track while scan radar azimuth, I believe it's 25 degrees left, 25 degrees right. Only targets that remain between these two lines will remain active in our TWS. So if one of these guys here slips out of that azimuth line there, then it won't work. I can't fire at him, I can't bug him, I can't system him, I can't fire a missile at him. So it's just one thing that you need to bear in mind. And the reason for that, I believe, is there's simply not enough ability in the radar to have these lines further apart while working in track wash scan like we've been showing so i'm going to keep them between the lines you can see that i've uh, deliberately disengaged here i've slewed my radar away from them i've uh, lost the uh, the ability to track those targets and the missiles have now gone funny so we have to support those missiles at least until they go active until they go pitbull otherwise they will not be able to seek another quick thing i've just thought that might help especially in TWS. this is rws or tws is the expand mode that we've just got hold of so say you've got four guys flying in close formation like that impossible to pick out which one you want to lock and you may want to lock just one of them i uh, will just do it an rws for, for now i'm going to unpause there i'm going to move my cursor over them there and i'm going to press the expand fob button I'm gonna, it's modal so i press it like that and it basically zooms in like that and if i want to bug one of these guys say that guy there i'm going to bug in there that's bugged him i want to press it again to zoom out and then i've bugged that particular the third guy in the formation and that's how you can use the expand button um other than that i hope that helps see you later